right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube. As always, if you learn something, leave a comment, hit that like button, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. So today, we're in Excel, and I'm going to show you a neat VBA function that enables address similarity and comparison of data in, in two columns. So I'm gonna show you how to implement what's called the Levenstein distance algorithm in Excel. It's gonna involve code from Stack Overflow, which is a website every good data analyst should know about. It's an invaluable uh, resource. Uh, informally, the Levenstein distance between two words, it's the minimum number of single character edits think insertions, deletions, or substitutions required to change one word into the other, right? And we'll demonstrate this shortly. It can be useful when you're trying to compare uh, addresses, right? Which I have in this, uh, this, these two columns here. This is fake data from Makaroo.com. Love using that site to make up uh, fake data. Uh, if you're ever on Final Jeopardy, the Levenstein uh, distance algorithm is named after a Soviet mathematician, Vladimir Levenstein. Uh, Wikipedia tells me that uh, he considered this distance in 1965. So take that and run with it. So let me first say uh, there is a proper way to do address matching, right? Excel is not the optimal case, right? So there are, a there are apps and services that verify that each address is valid and complete and convert the addresses into proper, you know, United States Postal uh, Service or international address format. They'll even give you a geocode for each uh, valid address. And so that costs money, right? So what ends up happening is that, well, and sometimes the data is sensitive, the, the addresses, and so most of these services are cloud-based services, so the data has to leave the premises in order to do it rightly, correctly, I should say. So some poor analyst like yourself gets conscripted into a no-win situation where the expectation is that, you know, Excel or some sort of manual review is going to get the job done. Um, even if you use SQL Server, it's, it's going to be tough because you're still going to have to manually review the results. Well, you know, you can do the job, but it's not with 100% accuracy. Anytime manual is involved, expect errors. You need to claim this up front so no one is surprised when it happens if you get conscripted into this type of a situation. If they're still surprised when it happens, then you're dealing with irrational people that don't understand <laughs> data and avoid dealing with irrational people. I'll just say that. So, uh, enough of me rambling on here. Let's first activate the developer tab in Excel, right? So if I right click here, if you don't have the developer uh, tab activated, you just got to go here to file and options. And then you can go down here to customize ribbon under, under the main tabs over here. You'll see there's a developer tab and you're going to hit OK. So that brings up the developer tab in, in Excel. Now the developer tab uh, is the place you want to go uh, when you want to write macros, you want to run macros that you previously recorded, or you want to uh, create a VBA module, which we're going to do. So I'm going to hit uh, Visual Basic here, and I'm going to go up here to Insert, and I'm going to insert a module. So a module um, contains custom macros and functions. For the majority of use cases, this is where you're going to place VBA code. Uh, a class module, uh, in simplest terms, with the help of the uh, VBA class module, you can create objects with your own properties, but, you know, that's, that's not what we're here for. We're going to put a module uh, into, this, um, into this workbook. And so now I'm going to show you where to pick up um, the code, the VBA code that's going to enable the algorithm. So you see... Uh, the address here, Stack Overflow, Levenstein Distance and VBA, um, is actually put in here 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago, right? So it's still here, and, is, and it's the main answer, so it's got to be good. So you're going to take this code, right? You're just going to copy all of this code that's here, and got to give a shout whoever to uh, whoever developed this, Smirking Man. So shout out to Smirking Man for coming up with this uh, algorithm. And you know we're just gonna we're just gonna use the algorithm. I'm not gonna step line by line through this through this code here, right? If 
you know, treat it as a black box. <laughs> it's going to give us the answers that we need. You're just going to um, just copy, you know, all of this. I already have it uh, in my clipboard, right? So I'm going to go back to Excel or go back to the module and I'm going to paste in this value. And what I can do at this point, I need to make sure, I'm going to go up here to debug, uh, compile VBA project, and I didn't get any errors. So that lets me know that, that it's working. So now let's test out the function, right? Let's just not put it in here and, and assume we can, we can test out this, this function. So let's go up here to view, and I'm going to say immediate window. And that brings the immediate window here. And the name of the function is Levenstein, right? So I'm just going to copy that. And in the immediate window, I'm going to put a question mark, put the name of the function, and then we can do something like this, something simple, hat and hat. Now, it's case insensitive. When I hit enter, you'll see that it gives me a value of three. So that means that in order, let's say, to change lowercase hat into uppercase hat, I got to make three changes. So if you're using the function, make sure that uh, you have a case similarity, all uppercase or, you know, um, some uppercase, some lowercase. Just make sure that um, you have to take into account that uh, it is case uh, sensitive, right? So if I, let's say I put a space here um, and this change this hat to hat. Right, I get a value of one because I have an extra space. So to change, let's say, this into this, I have to delete a space. So that's a one change. So you get a feel, you get a feel for, for, how, for how it works, right? Um, let's try one more, right? Kanye West. Kanye East, right? In an alternate universe. Two. So in, you know, the differences are going to be west and, and east. Um, you, know, you have to change the, the W into a capital E, and then the E here into A, and the S and T are the same. So that's, that's how that works. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of overview of how the function works. So we're going to take this function, and we're going to use it uh, for, for address comparison, for our two-column comparison. Okay, so now I'm back in Excel, and you'll notice, and I, I purposely put these in here, you'll notice that this is uh, all uppercase and this is lowercase. So uh, technically, if I did something like this in Excel, equal these columns, I'd get a true. But in the Levenstein distance, these would be completely different. I'd get a high number value. So the first thing I want to do is make both of these columns uppercase. So we'll do something like this, equal upper this value and equal upper this value, right? We just want to compare apples to apples, right? I've done that. I'm going to copy these two, control copy, paste special values, right? So, so we're not relying on the formulas and I'm just going to copy these headers over, right? And then I'm going to get rid of these two original ones. Or you can hide them, but just for the purposes of this demonstration. So now um, these will show up as exact matches when we put the Levenstein distance formula in. So you know, what we can do, I mean, exact matches are going to be easy to find. So we can do something like this. All right, so that's true. And then we can just kind of copy that all the way down. You'll see how many rows I have here. Uh, 2,000. All right, nice. Uh, even number there. And so we know the trues are going to match. So what I'm going to do is just filter for the false, because let's say you have to manually review all these. How many do we have to manually? We have to manually review 15, 10. And so let's say I start going through all of these. Um, you know, I'm going to have to spend some, some mental energy here going through these. Um, a lot of these look like real, real big misses, but some of these are going to be very close. Some of these are going to be very close, right? Here's a, here's a close one. Um, so here's one right here, 92 bunting trail versus 92 bunting TRL. And that's a legitimate abbreviation. So you just kind of have to spend some energy without this function. You're going to have to spend some energy going through uh, all of these. And so what I would do, um, I would go through here and put the Levenstein distance function in. So let's do equal Levenstein. 
And what do we want to compare? We want to compare this column with this column. Put that in there, 20. So what that's telling me is, uh, that's going to let me know that that's a huge mismatch between these two. And, and obviously, we can look at uh, some of these and see that they're a uh, big uh, mismatch. But take a look at this one, 123 Fifth Street in E versus 123 Fifth Street Northeast spelled out. That is that is a match, but, you know, using Excel, you know, that's going to come as a false, just the simple equal column, equal column, right? That's going to come as false. So let's copy this down. And so what I would do now and again, the assumption is you're going to have to manually review 1510. No fun. That's not going to be a fun day for you. But let's take a look at the Levenstein function, and let's take a look at, let's say, one one-off mismatches here. So you can kind of look at these and say 1439 Greyhawk way for 1439 Greyhawk WY. Okay, maybe in my manual review, I'm going to say that's a, that's a match. Uh, Mifflin, 4 Mifflin Street. So again, two Fs versus one. Is that a match? Is that a mismatch? That's what makes this so difficult. Uh, if we sent this off to another service to get, um, um, you know, verified USPS uh, address, this may come back as uh, Mifflin Street with two Fs. So maybe this is a match, right? Or it's a partial match or something to that effect. That's what makes this so hard. And, you know, people expect you know, perfection out of this process. So I can look at this, Gailey Way versus Gale Way. Maybe, you know, maybe that's a match, maybe that's not. But the point I want to show here is with the distance being one, you're going to have to put some thought into it. So that's 45 out of, you know, our almost 2,000. And so if we look at some of the quality, right, so that's one, I would say maybe one through 10. Again, every data, every data set's going to be different, but you can use let's say one through 10, um, 555. So, you know, that's 555 out of maybe 2,000 that you have to spend uh, some some energy going through. Hooker Alley versus Hooker Alley uh, with the abbreviation. That's probably a match, right? Um, you know, Northeast uh, Algoma Trail, um, and again, abbreviated. That's probably a match. So at least you know in here, you may have some matches. Now, if I look at, let's say I look at, um, let's go to distance and not one through 10. Let's say I go 25, you know, all of these late ones. We know, we know these are going to be uh, most likely mismatches. So I don't have to put as much mental energy. I can look at these and say, yeah, okay, most likely these are false. Just because the distance between them is so, so great. Um, these are going to be automatically falses. So you can just kind of go down manual review flag and just, you know, just call all of these false if you wanted to. So again, just wanted to show you this function, very useful function. Um, let's look at something like this, though. So you may think you found the cutoff, but uh, at some point, you know, I would say spend some energy taking a look right? 123 Fifth Street Northeast, right? And it's spelled out, but it's a 14 distance. That's probably a match, right? So it, it just it just depends. Most of these will probably not be matches, but you just never know when you're dealing with addresses. But the whole point of this is to show you that, yes, I can, I can look at my, I can spend most of my energy taking a look at maybe you know, again, one through 10, one through five, and I'd have to go through these. It's a much smaller subset of the 2000. And most likely I would find some matches or some, some partials in here where I can fill this out. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip. You learned about the Levenstein uh, distance. You learned how to uh, insert a function into Excel. And hopefully this function will help you out when you are in a pinch. Just make sure you let people know you're using Excel. And there's no guarantees with manual work in Excel. So... Again, this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you learned something new. If you enjoyed this, give this uh, video a like. Get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.